Good evening, Faith Life Church. Hallelujah. Can we stand up, please? We welcome all those who are watching us through the line. Um, we are going to have so much good time in the Lord because this service is about Him. Um, we are going to worship Him right now. But before that, I, want, I wanted to read something very fast here, Psalm 100. I wanted to read some couple of verse. Make a, a joyful, joyful shout to the Lord, all you land. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with sinning. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pastor. So right now we are going to worship the Lord, but before that we are going to pray. Father God, thank you so much in Jesus' name for this moment. You are giving to us to give the opportunity to be in your presence, to worship to worship you who created the heaven and the earth. And we thank you, Father God, because we are alive, yes, for you and in you. We pray we are who we are because it is it's you, Father God, in Jesus' name. We thank you, Father. Hallelujah. You are going to receive the worship. is going to touch your heart because it's coming from our heart to worship the King of kings and the Lord of lords. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Let's worship the Lord. Holy Spirit, yes. Take control of our life. Take control of our mind. Take control everything. Every single moment of our life, know now, always, Lord, when we are outside, when we are working, when we are walking, when wherever we are, Holy Spirit, lead us. You are the only one who can lead us the whole truth. And the truth is going to is the way you're going to set us free. And we thank you, Father God, for that gift. For that gift you gave to us, the Holy Spirit who dwell and live inside of us. We thank you, Father God, hallelujah, to seal us with your Holy Spirit. So, Holy Spirit, how you wait tonight and may, may room in, in our heart for you to do whatever you want. Bring conviction, bring, bring anything you want in our mind clear, we can see in the spirit, like John, he saw the Lord in the spirit. We want tonight, Lord, to have more revelation of you. Teach us, teach us how we can worship you in spirit and truth, because the true worship is necessary to worship in spirit and truth. We thank you, Father God, for being so good to us in Jesus' name. We pray, amen, and amen. Thank you, my sister Jennifer, for that wonderful voice that God gave to you to lead us to the presence of the Lord. Um, tonight is Wednesday, and um, our pastor, senior pastor, Pastor Ba, Pastor Debbie, they are on vacation, and you know what? They deserve that. So... They have so much fun, and we miss them, and they miss us. Uh, anyway, um, we say hi, hi. We love you. Uh, we'll see you. They are coming back when? They, uh, uh, it's the second? Third. The third. They are coming back at the third. Um, this Sunday is, is coming. Our brother Vince is the one who's going to preach in the morning. Uh, 10.30, the service in the morning, Sunday morning and Sunday nights, our brother, brother Harold. And Wednesday, I think, I am totally sure, my brother Neil, hallelujah, he's coming with fall, with, uh, I, I know he's seeking the Lord, asking the Lord what he's going to bring for next Wednesday. Because it's not him, it's the Lord he's going to bring the word, hallelujah, using his vassals, vassals of honor, he's choosing his vassal. Nobody is perfect, only Jesus. But God, our Holy Father, He sees us perfect through Jesus Christ. 
Amen. Hallelujah. Thanks God for his, his mercy. His mercy endures forever. Uh, you know what? Uh, um, uh, make me happy to see pretty face here. Everybody beautiful. You know, when my, my wife, she was telling me uh, when yesterday, day before yesterday, he said, Javier, you know what? I've been, I've been seeking the Lord. I've been worshiping him. I've been telling him, Lord, I want, I want to love you. I want to love you, but give me that. And you know what, Javier? I feel like I love everybody. Because when you love God first, and that, and that love how he want us to love him, you love the most ugly, you, more, you love the more uncomfortable people, you love the most difficult people, because he said, love and support, all those are difficult too. So, but when we have the love of God, it's easier. In the flesh, we can't do it. Amen? But it's only in the spirit. So, um, God is speaking to us, speaking to me personally, um, very deep. Um, sometimes I feel like, ouch, 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 but for my own good. Uh, and uh, because he's so holy, um, um, when he see through, and that light, perfect light, the, that divine light penetrating those areas. He said, wow, Lord, it make you, make you cry. He said, Lord, wow, help me in this area. Help me and help me and help You know why he does, and he does. So um, that is he's going to do tonight. He start to do it with me, and uh, uh, no will be two hours service, Will be maybe three and a half, but yeah. stay with me, okay? <laughs> Glory be to God, hallelujah. So anyway, um, we are going to keep worshiping uh, our Lord with our tithe and offering. Who is so happy to keep worshiping the Lord in that way? Yeah. I hear <laughs> big cow, hallelujah. Thanks God. You say something, baby? Oh, he does. <laughs> so anyway, um, he's our usher tonight to take the offering. Uh, who is going to sing? Uh, my sister? Shepherd, my sister Shepherd, or, or my brother Taylor is going to sing, or my sister Jennifer? OK, that is going to sing tonight. Hallelujah. We are going to receive the tie and offering, so uh, you have a check, you, you make it by Faith Life Church. Uh, oh, no, no, no. I take it back. DRM. So, DRM. And those who are watching through the line, you know uh, um, how, what you can do. Anyway, it's more the time the same people are watching us. So, anyway, thank you, Lord, for for uh, prepare our heart to give to you what belongs to you, and plus what we wanted to give to you with cheerful heart. You love those happy heart when they say, wow, we are going to give to the King of King and the Lord of, of Lord tonight. In Jesus' name we pray, and amen. Glory to Dios, I say, glory be to God. I'm not speaking in tongues, I'm speaking in Spanish. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, brother. Ay, ay, ay. Thank you, Lord. Father God, you are so good to us. You are awesome, Lord. Every praise to our God. That is all about to worship him. Hallelujah. I wanted to open your Bibles. In the book of Apocalypse, in Spanish, in English, is Revelation. And we are asking the Lord to bring to us the Revelation tonight. To give to us Revelation. Fresh Revelation. And uh, fresh vision. A lot of times we... 
uh, we know okay, we, God gave to us some a vision and uh, it's kind of the foggy, it's kind of there, but it's, it's kind of like a normal life. Uh, and God is telling us, well, you need to come back. And uh, <clears throat> we are going to, okay, my people, they know what to put charter to. We are going to read from verse 1 to 7. Chapter 2, verse 1 to 7. I think my son is going to help me because he read better than me. And he knows better English than me. I recognize that I humble myself. <laughs> and uh, sit down here over here, son. Okay. So Ready? we are going to read Revelation chapter 2, verse 1 to 7. Apocalypse, capítulo 2, versículo 1 al 7. Glory to Dios. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Continue, Teo. To the angel of the church of Ephesus write, These things says he who holds the seven stars in his right hand, who walks in the midst of the seven golden lampstands. I know your works, your labor, your patience, and that you cannot bear those who are evil, and you have tested those who say that they are apostles and are not, and have found them liars. And you have persevered and have patience and have labored for my name's sake, and I have not become weary. Nevertheless, I have this against you, that you have left your first love. Remember, therefore, from where you have fallen. Repent and do the first works, or else I will come to you quickly and remove your lampstand from its place, unless you repent. But this you have, that you hate the deeds of the Nicolaitans, tens of dear, sorry, which I also hate. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes, I will give to, I'll give to eat from the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Thank you, son. Father God, thank you so much for, for your word. And I thank you, Father God, you care so much about us. And you gave this book, and this book is yourself, your word, your own authority. And I thank you, Father God, to use that servant, John, to show us the, the things is coming, to warning us, Lord, where we are failing and we are in those areas we are no right before your eyes. And I thank you, Father God, for being so good to us. We are your children. We are your people. That's why you are still speaking to us because you love us. And we are your children. That's why you discipline us. And we receive it, Lord, for your glory. In Jesus' name, prepare every heart. Prepare every mind. Open our mind. Open our heart to receive what you have for us tonight, Father God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I put, it, uh, I put it the title here, Coming Back to the First Love. Um, John, the, John, he was taking, a, the Lord took him in the spirit, in the spirit, to the, uh, to the third heaven. But we need to recognize what place, where he was. He was in the, he was in, in, in fancy hotel, um, five star. Although fancy um, prison right now, I used to I used to go to preach in Stafford Creek prison, and those guys they had even TV in the in the room. They had gyms. They had a special building for computers. They had a sports. They have three meals. They have clean clothes. They know how even to wash it. They have food, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Now, John, one of the disciples, the only one survived and died all, this guy, he was in a place, it wasn't a pleasure, it wasn't a good place to be. 
he was in a prison the, um, called the Pasmos. That's the right way to say in English. So, uh, and when he was in this, in this prison was high security prison. The people go there forever. Cannot, there's no way to run away. Was there um, because how he said the Bible said for the, for preaching the gospel, for being a Christian, let's put it this way. But do you think that in that, in, in that uh, prison they had a church, they had a service like they have right now when I was going to, to preach there in Stafford prison? Um, and worship, all that kind of stuff, they have a, nothing like that, no way. So, um, but the, the Bible says he was in the spirit. How come he was in the spirit in those kind of places? It's a good question, right? And uh, it, it has to be um, somebody so deep, so um, so close to God, like Enoch. He was trusting in the Lord, no matter what. He, for to me, John, he was thinking, "Well, you know what? This earth, I am here in this in this earth just for a little bit. I am going to meet the Lord." I am going to worship the Lord more than never before, even in this dirty, nasty place. He was sleeping with chacos on the, in, in the ground, in the mud. Uh, in the spirit, he was in third heaven, and he received all this revelation in the book of Revelation. And for us to give to us. Now, the Lord, He knows everything. The Lord knows everything. He, know, he knows what is going on in the church. He knows what is going on in every single life of these people we are here right now. He knows what is going on in these seven churches. He called, tonight we are going to talk about the loveless church. Did I say that right? So, um, I asked the Lord, Lord God, I want you to, to, to control my tongue because my accent is kind of strong. So, uh, please, you need to help me. Let's put some oil there, but anointing oil, not a regular one. And in that way, I can speak better. And I think it's working. Amen. So, anyway, um, and what happened, Because the Lord knows everything, and he... Is speaking to these seven churches. And these seven churches is only two churches. It's kind of like pleasing God, the order of five churches, because it's seven, or the order of five churches is, is a struggling. They are before God, they are not right. They are doing good things and bad things at the same time. So um, the first one is the loveless church, and the second one, the persecute church. The third one, the compromising church, we see that a lot right now, right? Uh, the third one, the corrupt church. The fourth is the dead church. Number five, the faithful church. Uh, lukewarm church. Um, I said all of them, right? So anyway, but we are going to talk tonight the loveless church. Now, he's talking about, um, in this church, that uh, people is talking, is working a lot. It's working a lot, right? It's working, doing good things. But he says something, something in verse 4. In verse 4, he says something. I know you are working. I know you are the time the church. I know you are painting. I know you are the keep praise. I know you are doing all that kind of stuff. I know you are doing this and that. I know you are going out. I know all that, but it's something I against you. Something against you. And this thing is happening right now in the church. I don't know because it happened with me. I am putting, I, I don't know every, I don't know even my son because I live and he go to the, the bedroom, I don't know if he, if he playing with the iPad or what, I don't know. But I, I trust in my son that he's doing the right thing, he's doing 
what God is putting in your heart to keep worshiping Him and, 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 and studying the Word. Uh, but you know what? Um, God is telling us something. Nevertheless, I have things. This, I have this against you. And when he says something, I have this too against you, we need to be very careful. When God says something like that, no matter what, I had this too against you. And um, he said that you have left your first love. God is love. And why he said this, all these people is working and doing a lot of stuff. And he said, he said, you have left your first love. And he said, he giving this warning to the church. He giving the warning to us. And he says in verse 5, remember, remember the, remember therefore from where you have fallen, where, where you are failing, and repent. And do the first work or else I will come to you quickly and remove your lampstand from its place unless you repent. So he's telling the church all this and he's giving the opportunity and the way say, well, what you need to do, what happened to you? When you start to fail in me, when you start to be kind of the cold and far away from me, yeah, well, I, you are doing all that kind of stuff, but I don't see you loving me. You know what I feel in bed lately for a couple months? I don't know, it's only with me only. He said, you know what, I missed my church. I miss my church so much. I miss my people. But I see something. They don't miss me. Wow, I hurt. I miss my people, but they don't miss me. We have knowledge about God. A lot of people, they have knowledge about God. A lot of people don't even read the Bible. A lot of people don't even pray. What does pray mean? Let's talk with God. You know why I can't wait to go home and see my wife attack with her. Why? Why? Why, Mrs. Shepherd, you want to go home and see your husband and talk with him? Why? Because it's a connection there. This is something that can match, right? If you don't want to talk with him, you want it to be in your bedroom by yourself. No, leave me alone. It's something wrong in that picture. You say, ooh, what is going on here? So anyway, and then we get so busy, so busy, uh, we don't know that we are walking away from the Lord. We can sing, we can do, do all the duty. We can preach or whatever. What I put it here, in Spanish, I have not to, uh, to interpret in English. Okay, give me one second. <clears throat> Well, let's put it this way. What, what makes us to walk away or to be called or to walk away from that first love? What? What makes that? What is it? Because God said, this church, this is happening. Come back to me and repent. Remember where you are, where you are coming from, where you start to walk away from me. Well, I put a song point here. Number one, we work too much, and we spend too much time at work, and we are too busy. Um, too busy in the function of the church. We are too busy with the family, uh, children, grandchildren, whatever, too, or too much. Um, we put too much important, more important in our life, our family, our children, our husband, spouse, grandchildren. Also, the other point is offense. 
That's a, that's a key one is Satan is using in the church. I've been there. I've been there. I, I think I'm the only one take off in here in the church, but I am confessing that. And you know why it's ugly? You know why it's ugly? Are you thinking you're right and what happened? I, want, I am pushing away the Lord. You know why? Because he died for you, he died for you, he died for you. And who am I to get an offense? Jesus, he was in the cross. He, was, he had a right to be an offense, to be in resentment what they was doing against him. And he prayed. And that's the kind of attitude the Lord is putting me in my heart. Uh-uh, uh-uh. You pray, I love them. So offense. This, uh, um, and, but let's 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 look for Matthew chapter four. Matthew chapter four, uh, twenty-four. Excuse me, twenty-four. L- let's read verse ten to thirteen. You know. And then many will be offended, will betray one another, and will hate one another. Then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. And because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. But he who endures to the end shall be saved. Who endures to the end shall be saved. is talking about. And because lavishness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. Now, he's talking about the last day. And we can see the world doesn't have love. That kind of love, worldly love is not love. That's a carnal. The real love is the love of God. Agape. No matter what, we are going to love. And no matter what, what if you're right or not right, you have to, psh, Lord God says in your hand, is you will be done. Um, the minutes of an offense is going to take offense that make a, a, a wall between us and God. It's a, it's a wall made us blind. And you feel that okay, sometimes, because I've been there, so you are clapping, but you feel that emptiness. You feel you want it, but you are doing your own emotion and your own strain. Uh, uh, when I was praying, I, I, I said, the true worshiper is necessary to worship, but in what? Not in emotion. Not in emotion, in a spirit and true. So when you are in the spirit and true, you are in, in love with God. When you really are there. So in the last day, many, many, the love will be called. It's no love for the others. It's lo- only love for themselves. You know, some other sport, school, a lot of sport is taking place in families. I remember the family sometime as son, eh, we talk about that. We was, I am coming from Central Park, a church I was in Central, Central Park, and we know this, this family. And uh, they were missing a lot. Even Sunday because they had a football game, baseball game, they was in every single game, in every single sport in the school. And they were missing, missing. What is, what is that? A sport is nothing wrong. But if we put a sport first, then God, there is the problem. Uh, you know what? I, I had no clue uh, what was uh, American football. And from last year, I started to get into it and into it just a little by little. And now I love it. No, I, I, I love it. Now. That's in the right word. I like a lot. I like a lot. So, um, 
But you know what? When you put first the sport and your mind isn't there, more que, <laughs> your mind has to be full of God. Yes, yeah, we are going to think in this and this and this. Nothing wrong to think about Russell, Russell Wilson. Wow, good, awesome, he did good. Nothing wrong with that. But when that becomes number one, a sport becomes number one in our heart, taking places who belong to God, that is pulling away from the Lord, and you lost your first love. You lose your first love. Someday, we was in seaside, for example. I was watching the game. And you know what? The love I have for God, I'll have for my wife. I don't want to go for a walk. And my son too, come on, let's go for a walk. Okay, okay, let's go for a walk. He said, no, you stay here with me. We are going to watch the game. What does that mean? This is more important than you. All right? This is more important than you. So right there, I am showing something to her. The... God say, love your wife, right? Don't say, love more the sport than your wife. <laughs> I like the sport, but you know what? She's more important. And more than the situation what she's passing through. She needs my support, the, 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 the man who is with, with her, by her, and to please her in anything, whatever she wanted. The love of God, God please that. That is the love of God working people's life to show to the others. <coughs> if you don't show with your spouse, when you do that with the others, and she the number one, <laughs> you amen. So and the other is a school. So many people they are so busy in the school, they spend more time. You have to study. It's nothing wrong. You have to study. So many people they are in that and they spend so much in the, in, in, in the school, it's about school, they talk about school, or that um, school is good, you need to study, you need to have your career. Convivir, and con, uh, how you say convivir, um, um, to have fellowship with the people in this world. Do you know what, a lot of family, they have their kid, and what happened with those kids? They had no clue. The period, they had no clue what they are doing in those families' house. Okay, they are unsafe. I am so jealous with my son. Never. We, he stayed only one time with the McClaskey was. Was Christian family. That's the only one night. Um, we get so jealous. And this, the jealous of God, to guard our children. Because you know, teach your children from very little, you know what, they are going to walk away from the Lord, what they are going to learn, what have to do darkness with light, what they are going to watch, they are, what they are going to see, what they are going to hear in, in that uh, unsafe family. Amen? So when, when we know that uh, 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 so important, God is telling, is telling us, have jealous for, uh, uh, and to conserve and to guard what he gave to us. You know, that is, for the love of God, we do all this kind of stuff. <clears throat> for what the more point, the disobedient. I want to go to First King chapter 9. First King chapter 9, disobedient. Uh, the disobedient is, is, uh, uh, is a point. Is something that destroys. Disobedience came to this world, and that's why this world is like this. We, we know what happened with Sarong and Eve, right? For disobedience, the sin came, and Satan took place in, in their life. So, first king, first king, chapter 9. One, two, three. And it came to pass, when Solomon had finished building the house of the Lord, and the king's house, and all of Solomon's desire which he had wanted to do, 
that the Lord appeared to Solomon the second time, as he had appeared to him at Gibeon. And the Lord said to him, I have heard your prayer and your supplications that you have made before me. I have consecrated this house which you have built to put my name there forever, and my eyes and my heart will be there perpetually. Now if you walk before me as your father David walked, in integrity of the heart and in uprightness, to do according to all that I have commanded you, and if you keep my statutes and my judgments, then I will establish the throne of your kingdom over Israel forever, as I promised David your father, saying, You shall not fail to have a man on the throne of Israel. But if you or your sons at all turn from following me, and do not keep my commandments and my statutes which I have set before you, but go and serve other gods and worship them. Then I will cut off Israel from the land which I have given them, and this house which I have consecrated for my name I will cast out of sight, out of my sight. Israel will be as a proverb and a byword among all peoples. And as for this house which is exalted, everyone who passes by it will be astonished and will hiss and say, Why has the Lord done thus to this ha land and to this house? And they will answer, Because they forsook the Lord their God, who brought their fathers out of the land of Egypt, and have embraced other gods, and have worshipped them, and served them. Therefore the Lord has brought all this calamity on them. Is it verse 9? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, the first thing uh, the Lord explained to Solomon, he is giving to him, so, uh, um, warning him, giving to him a um, he cannot to, to get an a, a equal yoke. Um, and what happened, the first thing what Solomon, what Solomon did in First King, chapter 3, that's the first commandment God gave to, to, to him, even from, from Moses. We, you will not get an equal yoke. Squeeze all their nation. Did I say that right? An equal. Um, and the first, what he did, the first thing, he married, he married the Pharaoh's daughter. What is, what, the Egypt. And now, when he did this, immedia immediately he disobeyed disobey God. What is, what had to do light with darkness. So he brought to the house of the Lord, he brought to uh, the, uh, that people the daughter of, uh, you know, do you know case uh, Pharaoh represented Satan, right? And Egypt is the world. So he took a woman from the world and bring it to his life. So he's the leader, and he's giving this sample to the people. Now, <clears throat> we see how the end of Solomon. Solomon, he start good, but at the same time, he was making wrong, wrong decision. This is wrong decision was bringing to him very bad consequence. Get to the point that he, later on, he had a 700 concubines and 300 wives, 1,000 women. And plus, not only this, all these women were from the world, and he, in the end, all start to worship their God. Start to worship their God. Now, just a little by little, do you think in the beginning Solomon was going to end in that way? Something happened to him in his heart, like a David. It's not in my note, like David. David, he was in love with God. David, he was fighting, and David, he was in the spirit coming up upon him, and he was delivering his sheep uh, from the lion, from the bear, and he killed the Goliath, who everybody was their tail in, the, in, in between the legs, but this little 
guy, the redhead, he said, ha ha, with my God, you're not going to, to talk about like that, like my God. And he became the warrior <clears throat> man in Israel. He became king and God used him in mighty way, winning battles and battles and battles. Get to the point, wow, he had so much, he would get so much famous, everybody in the regions all the way around the world knowing who was that kind of David. And, but, but one moment, the Bible said, in those days, the kings, they go out to fight, but, it's, it's a bad there, but David stayed, he didn't go. So, David, he was a sleeping spiritual. Something will happen to him when, when sometimes we are like this spiritual, we are sleeping because that happened with me too. And, and we fell in one way or another way, but we cannot to be sleeping in the spirit because you are going, how can you say that first, first Corinthians chapter 10, verse 12, and then you put over there. So um, what happened when David was walking, when he was lazy spiritual, because a lot of times we get like that, lazy, a spiritual get, get lazy. And Satan, he knows that, oh, este, this, is, is, this piece of meat is easy. And he was walking, he saw something. He had to walk away and know he started to meditate and send his servant, who is that? He said, so and so. And we know the history, right? Something happened with David. Just a little by little, get to the point. Therefore, let him who think he... Stand, take heed, let he fall. A lot of people, he say, uh, 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 you know what? Uh, I've been in big Bibles, uh, college, the big names, TDJs, or um, Florida, Tampa, and this. Oh, I've been with um, Brother Hagan. Hagan? You can, we can know a lot. I know a lot of scripture in the Bible. I know a lot, but if we don't know, we know put that in practice, if we know how to keep that connection, how we John, we walk and live in the Spirit, we are going to fail. And I said again, and I said again, many times, um, <clears throat> I think, I think, and I see samples of these big men of the Bible, God used mighty, and the way how they felt, and the way how they did it, but some they repent and came back to the Lord, you know what? And the Lord forgive them and save them and keep using him. One guy also, and it's not in my note, uh, um, this king, Manasseh, Manasseh was a very bad king, really bad king. He was, he was taking the, the, his people, God people, to the destruction, worshiping idols. He, he was killing his own children in the fire. God sent his messenger and talked with him. Look at that, the mercy and the love of God. Even he was doing that with his own children. He, God, the loving God, wow, that is our father. He sent a messenger. He sent a prophet to, to give to him opportunity to repent, to warn him. And he, what he did, he <laughs> reject that word from the Lord. Sometimes, a lot, of, a lot of time, God is speaking to us, and we reject the message of what God is giving to us, and that becomes cold and cold and more far away from God when we have those kind of attitudes. And that kind of attitude has manasseh. What God say, well, you are off my hand. The enemy came, the Philistine came, cut him and cut you. He was a um, prisoner. And when he was in prison, and finally, he recognized and bowed down before God and recognized his God and recognized who he was. He was a sinner. 
He was doing what he was doing and he asked for forgiveness to God. And guess what? God forgave him. And not only that, restored his kingdom, came back and he be a king again. That is our God we serve. That is our God. He didn't send his son to condemn me and to condemn you. He sent his son to save me. He sent his Holy Spirit to bring me conviction and to tell me where I am wrong, what I have been thinking, what I said, what I saw. That is his, our God. He protect us. He loves us so much. He gave to us all the tools ha -ha, but to keep walking. All those, all those, all those who overcome to the end, those are the ones who <coughs> going to be safe. Now it's coming this. You know what? The game, Sunday, I didn't see, but he did report, and I saw some video. You know what? Everybody, <coughs> a lot of people, they get out of the stadium. They left the stadium because they said, this is over. They lost. They lost. They lost. A lot of people turned around the TV. Some people, they were thinking to turn around the TV. They said, oh, maybe not. No, no, no. I am going to leave the TV on. So they were like, you know what, Russell Wilson? He said, no. Hey, guy, we can do this. We can do it. We can do it. We can do it. No, you saw the attitude of the people. They were kind of like this. You, you saw that. Some people, they was, this is it, no more, we lost. Brother Wilson said, no, 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 no. We can do it, guys. We can do it. We can do it. You know what? This guy, this guy saw some videos. This guy nailed before go to the game and pray. All the time, this guy said, you know what? I give glory to God. When he interviewed, he said, I give glory to my God. I give glory to God. Guess what? God, I don't think he doesn't care about sport. He cares about the people, whatever they are. He is glorifying God. And I don't know, he, but God did something. Those people, they said, no, it's over. God, Russell Wilson said, no. Those who endure it to the end, he said, no, we are not, we are not done. Until the end, we are going to win this game. And guess what? That is the kind of attitude that all the Christians we need to have in our heart, in our mind. Those kind of attitude. You know what I felt? You know what? You know what? I hide this. Hi, Lord God, forgive me. Come to the, come to the front and repent. And repent. He said, <clears throat> remember where you, where you fell. Remember. Remember. Oh, I will take away that lamb. In other words, I will erase your name from the book of life. You are almost close, but if you come back to me, everything will be okay. All those who endure to the end, those are the only ones that can be saved. <clears throat> Arrogance, pride. My brother and sister, we can say, Fire for God, fire for God. If we are not in, in the prayer meeting, and we are no, if we don't have a desire to win soul, we can say and get blue. Fire, yeah, we are in fire. You, we, you, we don't see you there. Something is wrong in that picture because with our mouth we can say everything. But let's see the fruit. Let's see the fruit. Anyway, I want to close with this. Luke chapter 22, Luke 22, verse 31. Hallelujah, glory to God. Thank you, son. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, indeed Satan has asked for you that he may sift you as wheat. Um, Taylor, can you do me a favor? Can you keep reading here, verse 32? Can you do it? I'm sorry. But I have prayed for you that your faith should not fail, and when you have returned to me, strengthen your brethren. He said, but I have prayed for you. We have 
Thank you, son. We have a Jesus who is our intercessor. Hebrews 7.25. He is our intercessor. Put that one, Hebrews 7.25. He said, but I've been praying for you. I've been praying for you, Jesus. And when he was in this earth, only three years, he had a ministry, four or five ministry. But guess what? He had a ministry for over 2,000 years. One ministry, being intercessor. He being intercessor for you and for me. He hear your prayers. He said, you know what, Peter? But I pray for you already. I pray for you. We know, we know the history. Peter walked away from the Lord. Peter, he was a big mouth. But he had a heart for God, too, at the same time. Nobody perfect. Nobody perfect. Peter, he denied Jesus three times. He denied Jesus three times. Three times. Three times. Says so say, yes, I got it. But Peter, he was crying so deep because he hurt Jesus and he repented. Truly repent from his heart. But he said, but when you come back to me, and guess what? The first message of Peter was, wow, powerful. 3,000 people get saved with that boldness, with the power of the Holy Spirit, because he came back. Judah, he was in sin all the three years. Um, Judah, he had a worldly, worldly sorrow. And what he need to do is, I has sinned against the Lord. No, he took his own and hung up himself. That is worldly sorrow, no real repenting. But Peter came back and God saw his heart and he see our heart right now. And he knows exactly where, where we felt him from where we are walking away. And what is that is blocking that relationship with him? Why you are not a prey closer anymore? Why you don't have that desire to be in the prayer meetings anymore? Because in the prayer meeting is to talk with God. Ah, as prayer meeting is to talk with him. Winning soul, you know what? Winning soul, that is the whole message of the gospel, to win soul. And that's in number one, that's why Jesus came. That's why God so loved the world. He sent his only begotten son, who would ever believe in him, is going to be saved. But how they are going to know? Somebody had to tell them. When we had a love for God, that fire for God, you had a desire. I admire my brother Gary. <clears throat> my, my brother Gary is, I was talking with uh, Pastor David, I think with Charlie also. Uh, <clears throat> I don't want to embarrass you, brother, and the glory to God, but I have to say this. You know, he um, he's kind of the shy, kind of the mm, not that much word, but he does a lot in the church. And every single, uh, uh, when we are doing uh, outreach, He's already been there. Even he not talk, but he's there and helping. He's there. And, uh, and we have all of them that, you know what? Think about it. The love of God, we are getting closer to him, and he will become closer to us. Come near to God, and he will be near to us, right? So um, uh, let's, let's clock with this one, Psalm 51. Psalm 51, we are going to read verse 10 to 12, and the last one will be verse 17. 10 to 12, and then 17. My son, my son, my son, you have awesome voice, son. Thank you, Papito. Create in me a clean heart. No, 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 oh. verse 10. Yeah, good. 
Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and uphold me by your generous spirit. Now, create in me a clean heart, O oh God. David, he recognized when he fell before God, right? We know his story. And when he came before God with real repenting. And he wanted God to start and hear the road to take everything clean. Because God is the only one who has the power to clean our heart with that precious and powerful blood. Create me a clean heart, O oh God. And renew a staff a spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence. And do not take your Holy Spirit from me. That song our sister Jenny was singing the last one. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Your Come fill out this place and fill the atmosphere. With you, atmosphere, you holy God. In, in the presence of the Lord, when we are in his presence, not only we become that fellowship with God, it becomes so normal, not in the prayer closet, you know, when we are outside too. That, how my wife said, you know what, Javier? We were walking, and they said, well, I feel to love everybody. And she wasn't in that place, uh, in, in her time, only with God. We was outside with people, and she, that God had given to her in that room, in that fellowship, only her and God is showing outside. Oh, Javier, you know what? I feel to love everybody. I feel, wow, everything you see, this and that. The love of God makes you to see things even better. The presence of God, when it's in you, the Holy Spirit is in us, is going to renew you, to give you a strength, and give, give the reason to live and to keep going to the end. 17. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit. A bro and a, a broken and a contrite heart. These, O oh God, you will not despise. Amen. So tonight, God is giving these messages. And whoever has those kind of hearts, well, you see, everybody's in fire and die and I pray close. Well, hallelujah. Give me some of you. Give me some because I need it. I need it. Things happen in our life, not because we want to walk away from the Lord. What thing, this thing happened with my wife is I get sometimes into it so much in that and working and then cooking and doing this and that. I get tired physically, um, e emotionally. So things like that, is, when you don't see, you don't pay attention, you are walking away. I am not spending the time how, how I used to. I am not spending the time how I used to because things is taking place. For example, today, I get, I get up early. I get up like a 10 to 5 to pray and worship the Lord. My wife, uh, he said, tomorrow you are going to preach. He said, yeah, and I don't have nothing there. Yeah. I have some idea here and there, but um, what I'm trying to say, confirmation. The confirmation. And this morning, the, the Lord start, the Lord start to put point here and here, and... This is the, the, what he wanted to speak to us tonight. Amen? Amen. We get something tonight? Amen. I get something tonight. 
I want my life changed. I want my heart be changed. I want God to help me to change the way of thinking, the way how I speak, the way how uh, uh, my attitude. I want God to help me. And he the only one can do that. And I want to love him more than ever before. And with his strength and his Holy Spirit, he's going to help me. And also, he's one to give that to you too. Amen? Amen. Let's stand up. Please. Father, we are going to put in practice what you said to us tonight. Your word, your word is the spirit and is life. And you say, who have here, hear what the spirit of the Lord say to the church. Holy Spirit, you spoke to the church tonight. You spoke to me personally. And I receive, Lord, and I receive, and I receive your discipline. I receive your love, and I receive your direction. We receive. Everything is coming from you because everything, every good thing is coming from the above. And I thank you, Father God, to touch heart, to change life. And I thank you, Father God, for what are you doing, what you're doing in our life. And I thank you, Father, because we wanted to please you. We wanted, Lord God, to do your will. We wanted to walk how you say to walk. Because you said, be holy because I am holy. Father God, thank you for my brothers and sisters. Thank you for the pastor you put in this church where they are right now, Father God. Bless them with your holy presence, Father God. Refresh him with fresh anointing in their life, Father God. When they come back, Lord, from Tampa, Florida, Lord God, come back with them fire, Lord God, with more revelation, fresh vision, Father God, from heaven, in Jesus' name. And I thank you, Father God, for all the leaders worshiping in this church. Thank you, Lord God, for the Spanish ministry, Father God. Thank you, Lord God, for every single one you are at in this church. Hallelujah. The glory is your, Father God. This is your church. Your church, oh Lord Jesus. You pay the price. You pay the price. This is your church, Lord. In Jesus' name, thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. Hallelujah. Whoever.